Hello everybody and welcome again to Watch Dan, where you are always welcome to watch me talk about watches. Today I'm taking a look at the Seiko Baby Alpinist Pro Specs SPB155J1. Uh, this is a watch that's been in my collection for about a year and a half. It's a 38 millimeter watch with 46 millimeter lug to lug. Uh, it's 12.9 millimeters thick. And it's a very cool looking watch. This is a, uh, this one is well loved as you'll be able to see here as I move through this video. Um, it's got that characteristic Seiko bend through the ringer look because I use this one to build outdoor kitchens for the last couple of years. And uh, it's even got a couple little scratches on the crystal that I'll try to get you a close up of. Um, the dial on this watch is a Fume Green that transitions to a Fume Black on the outside. Um, green happens to be one of my very favorite colors. And when I saw this watch first come out, I said, oh man, I'm gonna need to buy that. Um, as far as I know, it's kind of a limited run because it seems to be out of stock in a lot of places. So I'm glad I got my hands on one. Uh, the indices are applied and they're kind of a faux patina look. Don't let it fool you, they're not loomed. The loom is actually on the outside ring uh, at the hour markers. The Seiko logo is applied and it is very nice looking. This watch has gold hands with a, a cathedral style hour hand and kind of a syringe looking uh, minute hand there. There is loom on the second hand, which is nice. And this watch gives you 200 meters of water resistance via this unsigned screw down crown. And that's part of the reason I've worn this watch everywhere because a watch with 200 meters water resistant can be taken in the ocean, it can be taken in the pool, in the jacuzzi, and as long as that uh, crown is screwed down, you're never gonna have any issues. Moving over to the side, it's got a little bit of a profile to it. It's kind of a, almost a bubble back looking, a little bit rounded, but with a very nice mirror finish all the way around. The lugs droop down a little bit, and there are female end links, which make it sit on the wrist very nicely. The bracelet on this watch is scratched to heck, and it's still holding strong. It uses pins and collars. It's sort of an oyster-style bracelet. It's kind of got that Seiko jingly-jangly thing going on. Um, the individual links are polished on the sides, even though they're not as polished as they used to be. Uh, the clasp has Seiko's garage door on the back. And I guess before I go any further, I need to do a wrist check, don't I? The Sarb just felt appropriate today because these watches are garage door twins. And moving on, let's see. Got a nice little stamped clasp there. The Seiko rectangle, as I call it. Uh, a very nice milled swing arm. It is very comfortable and it closes with a very reassuring click, as they all seem to. Now the bracelet tapers from 20 down to 18 millimeters. Um, this watch weighs in at 136.8 grams, and I have one link removed. And so far, the Caliber 6R35 in the back has been keeping time at about minus 10 to minus 12 seconds per day, which is well within Seiko's specifications. And we'll go ahead and take a look here. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'm going to pull this bracelet off real quick, guys. That way I can show you the amazing 6R35 movement. So I'll be right back. And we're back. So first, let's take a look at this bracelet. I need to be careful because these uh, spring bars will just pop out the back and then the lugs will fall, or the end links will fall off. But you can see the inside of that bracelet's holding up pretty good. Yep, come on, glove. There's our end link with a little stopper on each side so that the uh, end links are a little easier to reattach. So there we go, that's our bracelet. 
Now, let's have a look at this watch head here. First things first, get a little peek into those end, uh, into those lugs there. Nothing super exciting to see. So let's flip her over and take a look at this movement. Now this is the 6R35 movement. Uh, beats at three hertz or 21,600 beats per hour. And this one is uprated from the Sarb uh, it's a 6R35 instead of a 6R15. So we're having, we have 70 hours of power reserve in this watch, which is pretty darn impressive, honestly. Um, you know, that's just a long time. You can take it off on Friday and put it back on Monday and it should still be beating. Um, you can see a little bit of a, you know, a grain there on the bridge. And the rotor itself, I'm gonna try to bring it in here a little closer, if my camera will let me. The rotor itself has a nice little decoration to it. Uh, I don't know why they felt the need to put that giant painted Seiko on the back mineral crystal. I think it kind of just takes away from, you know, being able to view what's inside there, but Whatever, that's what they wanted to do, so that's what they did. Um, Anti-magnetic, made in Japan, and stainless steel. Try to get a little picture of that balance wheel in there. Huh? There we go. You can see these are actually very easy to regulate, but I'm not gonna waste my time regulating this watch. It runs okay for what it is. And to be honest, I don't wear it all that often anymore since I have other watches that I prefer to wear that are similar to this. So stand uh, by guys real quick. I'm just going to pause this again. I'll we'll put that bracelet back on and then we shall continue to wrist shots and loom shots. Okay, let's have a look at this watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. Again, this is a 38 millimeter watch. You can see if you look closely at the Sapphire Crystal, it is single domed, not double domed. As a result, you have some distortion when you turn the watch sideways. Some people like it. I could take it or leave it, to be honest. But yeah, um, 38 millimeter watch, 12.9 millimeters thick, 20 millimeter lugs. And it fits like a dream. It's extremely comfortable, as most Seikos seem to be. It's an everyday wear watch, no problem. And, uh, yeah, I really like this watch, so let me take you into the darker room here. Let's have a look at that loom, huh? You can see the Seiko equivalent BGW-9 starting to glow already. And it glows quite bright, and it glows for a long time, even though uh, there's not a ton of it on the dial. But let me just go ahead and close this door to get a better look. Now, one thing I appreciate about the Sarb is, well, for one, the loom's on the inside of the indices instead of the outside, and so it just matches up a little bit better uh, with the hands. But also, um, you're missing loom at three, and the loom at 12 is a double, a double loom bar, so it's easier to orientate where you are on your dial. Uh, with this one, it can be a little tricky. Now, I will say, in the middle of the night, if I wake up, I can definitely see all the indices in the hands, no problem, uh, because the loom is so bright that it just, it diminishes, but just not a lot. Um, but then it's just a little tricky to orientate. So right now, the 12 o'clock is vertical. So you kind of just have to know your wrist positioning if you're ever in this situation. But the loom is excellent, guys, and it's nice of them to give you a loom second hand so you know if your watch is still running. So, anyways, that's the Seiko Baby Alpinist, and I'm going to wrap this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know how I'm doing. And uh, until the next one, we'll see you guys later. Bye now.